What is up, everybody? This is Austin, again, aka Try Something. What we're going to talk about today is your race gear. It's important to get your race gear together at least two days, or at very least one day before your race. Uh, it's important because you might need some last second adjustments to be made, such as your rear wheel needs to get chewed out, or you forgot some gels. Um, sometimes races start very early and you're not going to have enough time to get those last second things done. The first thing you need, obviously, is a bike. Make sure your bike is tuned up, your tubes aren't too old, everything's tight, moved up, ready to go. Make sure you have your shoes. Make sure your shoes fit and the clips are right, nothing's worn out, and you've used it before. Next, helmet. Helmet is very important. You cannot race without a helmet. I've seen people forget a helmet and they can't race. Very rarely, someone at the race is gonna have an extra helmet. Don't forget it, it's an easy thing to forget. Bike pump. Bike pumps are important to bring to the race and fill up your tires moments before the race. I personally like to bring my pump and fill it up as I'm unloading my bike before I head over to transition for the first time that morning. The tires naturally lose about three PSI a day. So it's important that you fill your tires up with the correct PSI at least a couple hours before the race. Multi-tool. Multi-tool is important for last second adjustments that you may not have noticed, such as tightening up your aero bars or adjusting your seat because over time they may come loose. And if you don't notice it till last second, you need to make sure that you're prepared to make that last second adjustment. Rubber bands. Rubber bands are really nice to have, and if you forget them, many times people will have them at the competition, but it can be a hassle uh, trying to notice what person has them and the right person to ask. The rubber bands are important for strapping your shoe to your bike um, for a faster transition time. The Shoes can be left unattached to the bike, but then you're gonna spend more time putting them on after you get out of the water, you're gonna put on your shoes, and then you're gonna to have to run with your bike shoes over the mounting area, and that just takes additional time. Don't forget the rubber bands. Your gels, your nutrition, your electrolytes, those are important things. Uh, it can really hurt your performance if you're used to having something while you're competing and you don't have it. Make sure you have your gels and make sure you have whatever you put in your water, uh, whatever you used to train. Don't try anything new. Wetsuit. Wetsuit is highly recommended for water temperatures below 70 degrees. It's going to keep you warm and it's going to make you faster. Very important. Plastic bag. It's a handy thing I've learned to have. It is important to have after the race. Your wetsuit is going to be all wet and sandy and dirty and it's nice to have that plastic bag to put your wetsuit inside of after you're done with the race so it doesn't get the rest of your stuff wet so you can immediately put it in the bathroom and clean it in the shower after you get home. Goggles. Make sure you have your main goggles. Make sure you have a spare pair of goggles. Goggles are common to break at the sides of plastic pieces. Make sure that your extra pair of goggles you've used once or twice before, uh, make sure those work as well. Lube, there's a few different types of lube uh, that you need to keep in mind and bring along with you. You're gonna need your basic aircraft lubricant for your chain, like a WD-40, uh, for your derailers, whatever friction things you might need to lube that will make your bike perform better and make you faster. There's gonna be the baby oil, which will uh, can be used as a skin lubricant uh, around your ankles, around your wrists, around your neck to uh, you know, decrease likelihood of a rash or to take a wetsuit off faster. It also can be used as an anti-fog for the inside of your goggles. If anyone's ever been on a long swim and they've experienced the fogging up on the inside of their goggles, they know how bad it can be. It's like swimming blind. Your race kit. You're gonna have your race shirt and your race shorts, unless you have a one piece. Uh, it's nice to put that on underneath your warm clothes right after you get up in the morning before you head to the competition. 
That way, when everybody starts putting on their wetsuit before the competition, you just take off your pants, put on the uh, wetsuit over your race shorts, your one piece, and you're good to go. Your run shoes, make sure your run shoes are shoes you're familiar with. You've run in them many times before. You have your elastic laces and you're familiar with the tension of the elastic laces. It'll definitely speed up transition times if you have the elastic laces. Your race bib, the elastic strap that goes around your waist that your bib attaches onto is very important to have. Don't mess around with all the safety pins. That can waste an extra you know, 30 seconds to a minute. Uh, it's unnecessary. Make sure you have a race bib, attach your race number to it. Uh, after you put on your shoes, just grab the bib and start running. You can put it on uh, while you're running out of transition area on your run. Sunglasses, hat, and visor. Those are mainly used for sun protection. Some people like to uh, not use a hat. I don't use a hat, but I do like sunglasses. Some people don't like to use sunglasses too because they fog up right after you get out of the water, you grab your bike, put on your helmet, you have your sunglasses on, they might fog up and you just end up putting them on your forehead and or putting them lower on your nose and looking out like this. Uh, I feel more aero in them and you know they, they look cool too. So I like to use them because they have multiple purposes for my race. Transition mat. You can use one of those professional transition mats that they sell online. Uh, I like to use a bright towel. That way, when I come out of the water or I come off the bike, I can step onto the towel, wipe off my feet, or do whatever I need to do with that. And, and I can also uh, use it for drying off after the race. Water bottles. Um, it's important that you bring a couple water bottles with water you're used to drinking. You don't want to drink water that is supplied at the competition. As a last resort, maybe, but the pH level may be different. I might have a, a lower pH and it might put a shock through your system or the exact opposite, a higher pH. So it's important that you bring water in, in water bottles from your house or wherever you came from that you're used to drinking and it'll help out a lot. Backpack, it doesn't need to be anything special, but your backpack, needs to be able to fit uh, the majority of your stuff. If you have a, uh, a bag for your helmet or for your shoes and they don't fit, just tie it on the outside with a regular backpack and you shouldn't have a problem at all. I just use a regular backpack, uh, strap on my uh, shoe bag and my helmet bag to the outside of the backpack. The Victoria Aerosol, it is a substitute for a tube in CO2. I attach it to the uh, down tube of my bicycle. And in case I get a flat, I just take off the aerosol can I attach it to my bike with electrical tape and fill my tire up and I'm good to go. A lot of the times people have all these things together, but they don't know what time the race starts. They focus too much on what they need to prepare, um, all their gear, but then once they get to the race, they don't know what's going on. Make sure that you study the course, you get your race schedule together, and you bring a race schedule, um, you know, so you have a layout of what's going on and the exact times. Like I said before, electrical tape, when I attach it to my aerosol can, I also uh, use it to attach the gels onto my bike. And it has other purposes as well, but electrical tape can be very useful. And other than that, you can go to my website, fastesttransition.com and you can print out a PDF of the checklist that I made. I hope it helps out and wish you the best of luck in your race. Later.